I'm excited for this video for two reasons. It's the start of a whole new project and we've upgraded the sound equipment. It's always amazing when you upgrade things because what you had before immediately becomes unacceptable. Uh, you know, you have to look back and think, was it, was it really that bad? I had to review a couple of the previous videos to actually make sure that there wasn't some sort of fluke. So on a certain level, I apologize. We're trying to make everything better. The lights and the camera are next up on the list. Uh, not necessarily immediately, but when it makes sense and we're, we're experimenting with different things. So you can look for improvements in those areas as well. On the camera topic though, this project is a part of those improvements. If you want to take good shots, the camera has to be stable, like a tripod or just moving smoothly, panning. And moving smoothly is really difficult to do by hand. Particularly with an SLR or a small camera, you end up with a lot of this going on. You can buy stabilizers that work in different ways. Some have counterweights, some have brushless motors and uh, gimbals and things like that. But one strategy that has caught my eye more than once are robotic arms. There's a German company called the Marmalade, which uses them to do high speed work. So things that end up looking like CGI by the time they get done, but it's all, it's all real. And another recent one was in the movie Gravity, where they used robotic arms for regular speed shots, but they were still special effects. It helps with compositing and other things, I think, because you know exactly where your camera is and you can repeat it again and again. Both of these approaches, though, use industrial type robots. And the problem there is that they're set up to use what I'm gonna call servos. They might call them actuators or different things, but they're, they're basically servos. You send them a position and they go to it. And these servos have to be strong and smooth, which ultimately means that they're expensive. Even basic robot servos that I've found, which have feedback for position and other things, are a couple hundred bucks a piece. That's just the servo. Then you need drivers and other things like that. So I've been trying to figure out how can I cross up the robotic arm strategy with a mechanism that's more cost effective and accessible. Here's what I came up with. So like all good ideas, I think the way that I came up with this one was I was brushing my teeth and I remembered watching a video of a circus type performer balancing their way backwards, so to speak, from a feather. And they start with a feather and then they balance that on the end of a lever or another feather or something artistic and then work their way back in a sort of herringbone pattern. And the key to this was in placing the end of one lever at the fulcrum of the previous one. And as long as you continue to balance, each successive lever, everything will stay balanced. The circus one is particularly impressive because the pieces aren't fastened together. They're just held there by gravity. But my thought is that if we put a camera on the end of the first lever and balanced our way back, we would gain a few very important benefits. Number one, the holding torque or the power required to maintain a position is effectively zero because everything is always in balance. Number two is that having this lever set up with counterweights creates inertia, which helps make the shot smooth. And number three, similar to number one, is that the force required to move the system is quite low, so we can use relatively weak equipment. In order to test this strategy, we have of course built a prototype. So keep in mind that this is just the prototype and a full camera control system would obviously need several more axes and much more weight capacity but it should be fundamentally the same thing. So we're gonna start with two axes and work out the control and other system bugs. It also gives us a way to check it because we can use it to say draw a circle or things like that with the end and get a feel for the accuracy. The first arm looks like this. It's half inch plywood, 23 inches between pivot points and with about a dozen washers on the end for the load. It's easier to tweak the load in this case rather than the main counterweight just because of the size of the blocks that I used. Skateboard bearings and bolts, 5 16 bolts, just regular coarse threads, make up the rest of the axles and pivot points. If we move back, you can see that this system continues with another arm, just like we talked about. It has the same distance between the pivots, which should make some of the control stuff easier. It's just wider for stability and with a heavier weight in the back. It takes a bit to get things balanced, but once you do, it's pretty fun to play with. You can also see that with even two roughly two foot arms, the total reach is significant because you can reach above and below your center point. A future version would have a cantilever joints to allow 360 degree rotation, which would further increase the range of motion. So that's a really good start in the mechanical part, but what are we gonna do for the controls? 
I've decided to go with stepper motors over servos for a few reasons. First, if you're not familiar with the difference between stepper motors and regular motors, uh, the difference is that stepper motors, you basically instruct them to go a certain number of steps, one step at a time. I guess you only give it one step at a time, which is go here. And each one of those, depending on the motor, a lot of them are 1.8 degrees. So you give it a step, it goes 1.8, you tell it the next one, versus a regular motor, which is you put power in and rotation comes out if the motor is appropriately sized. The problem with servos uh, is that most have a limited rotational range, although some are continuous, and they end up jittering. And since they're geared down a lot, it's hard to turn them when the power is off. They won't freewheel. Whereas a stepper motor, you can turn the power off and there's a very slight amount of resistance, but it'll freewheel very, very easily. One thing that I would like to avoid with this project is a complicated control system or at least an interface. Nothing ruins a cool physical toy more than a clunky software interface. You want it to do something neat and you have to go in there and slide this and slide that. Ugh. So if we attach rotary encoders to these axes, they can be used to provide a position readout for the stepper motors. And if we cut power to the motors, we can manually manipulate the arm, record the encoder output, and use that recording to sort of train the arm's motion. There are a bunch of details behind this that need to be taken care of, but overall I think it's a good strategy because it keeps the control system closed, by which I mean everything is on the same chip. We don't have to interface with the computer or other things like that. Rotary encoders are also nice because they provide super clean data on the output, which reduces the need for filtering and for somebody, you know, entry level programming like this is, is helpful. Uh, I've already done quite a bit of background work on this project, which is part of the reason why the expanding table upgrades took a bit longer than expected. Um, most of the major strategies have already been tested though, the stepper motors, rotary encoders, the mechanism itself. So I feel pretty confident that the general plan is gonna work. We just need to tie everything together and wrap up two or 300 details. It's gotten late this week and I wanna cover these things properly rather than just racing through it. So I'll leave you with a project summary which is we're gonna build a camera motion control arm, which uses uh, counterweights to limit the power requirements while also increasing the smoothness of the motion. And to program this motion, we're gonna disengage power from the stepper motors, manually manipulate the arm, logging that data on the encoder, do a little filtering and smoothing, and then we can basically replay that motion with the camera on and get the shot that we want. So we could set it up somewhere with the camera up high Say we want it to do this, reset it, smooth it out, whatever, and it'll do that. So next week I'll talk about the prototype mechanism's details and get into some of the nitty gritty stuff and progress that we've made, a few tools that we've acquired to help us out, and uh, we'll get some things hooked up and start driving it around. So see you then and thank you for watching.